everyone, this is Felix from GMWolf. Today we're looking at Shader Maker version 0.5. So, uh, as you can see, there's been a huge change since the last version. In fact, it has been completely reworked. So, let's look at the changes. Uh, first of all, you can notice this bar on top, uh, which is um, what you're going to be using to, as the name of the buttons suggests, add nodes, export, save, and load. Um, second of all, um, well, actually, before that, you probably noticed that the whole design changed. That's because I'm using a, um, the Zooey engine that you can find in the marketplace. I really, really like it. Um, not made by me, but still really good. So you guys should check that out. Um, anyway, let's get in and look at what changed exactly. So if I press a node on the top left corner, uh, this new window pops up and uh, there's tabs on the left, which are basically uh, the math tab where you'll find all different mathematical operations. Um, just as adding, multiplying, and since last time there's been um, sine, cosine, and tan added as well as the add salute value, and there'll be more coming al al along the road. Uh, in Vector 2D you have, uh, I think, the same as last time, um, and then you have the color uh, tab which adds, um, which basically has the same, uh, exactly the same as before. Um, so to add a node, let's for example, add a, in the color, the color input over here, and you have this nice little thing with four sliders. And I can connect this over here to here as usual and see that uh, what is happening exactly on the right. And uh, I can just tweak these colors to get the exact color I want. Now, uh, as you can see, there's the preview window, uh, the preview color for the actual color here, which is working perfectly uh, with the alpha channels, etc. And uh, as usual, we can still add a, a mixing, like so, uh, like here, and then add a input over here. So as you can see, it's been very stream, very much streamlined in order to um, make making uh, shaders a lot more uh, easy uh, to get, really. Um, so the next feature that's been added is saving and loading. So these are all the two buttons over here. So I can press the save button like so. Uh, this uh, save file window will pop up and I can just um, name my file something. Let's go here and call it test file. Press enter. And uh, now if I go into the save section, I should see. Well, I don't see it now. So yes, there's been a few bugs with the saving system, but I suspect it is actually a bug with Game Maker itself, where I cannot save wherever um, I cannot save somewhere which is the same in the same directory as the working directory. But I'll see if this is truly uh, a bug. Yes, it is. So as you can see, I saved it to my desktop and it did work. So um, just a bug, which uh, I'm not sure if it's. Um, something wrong with my, my software or if it's wrong with Game Maker itself but um, it seems you cannot save anything to the same working directory so where the actual file folder is found so for now you have to save it somewhere else like the desktop as I did right there so you can see it creates a folder that's called a .smk for shader maker and then uh, later on if you start doing some uh, weird stuff for example changing a few of those values around um, you know disconnecting something like that you can still load it here press load, find it over here, and it will reload all your file as it was before. And uh, the input node may have a slight issue, but uh, that will probably be fixed before I um, before I submit it to the um, Game Maker community. Next, we have the export button, which you can just simply press export, and you'll have this nice window over here that comes up. Um, so, again, just like the version before, there's still the bug where the text will come crop out of uh, the window. I'm trying to find a fix for it. Um, I'm thinking making it skip a line from here on. However, I'm going to have some problem with the line numbering, so I'll have to figure that out for before next version. But um, it doesn't matter because you can always copy to clipboard over here and uh, open, for example, notepad, like so paste it in and you have your code which is you can then co paste inside a game maker in the fragment section of the shader as usual um, so let's look at the other nodes that we have so I'm just gonna oops, click um, load 
I'm just gonna just load uh, this thing with less nodes in the way. If I add node and go in vector 2D, for example, we have uh, the vec2 node, which allows you to have a vector. Um, so you define direction like so, and you can define that the, the size of it, where this is one and this is zero, and etc. You don't currently have a, a way of knowing what the size of this is, but uh, it is something I plan on adding. Alternatively, in the vec2, you can also just simply create it with two value inputs, which may be more appropriate. Uh, we also have the ability to add, the ability to uh, uh, get the x, y, and length of a vector, and um, having the basic texture coordinates, etc. Uh, there's also the scale, which I haven't mentioned yet, which allows you to take a vector and scale it with a scalar value. So these are the, the, the effect two um, nodes that are in this version. Um, something that is new also are the color make RGBA and color get RGBA have an actual alpha channel, which I don't think was in the last version. So this has been added, um, which is really, really useful because if I say I mix two colors together, um, like so, with a value, do I have a value somewhere? I don't. Add no maths. Are you input? Sorry, this is getting really messy. But like so, disable this. Where is my preview? Oh, it's right here. Like so. As you can see, uh, the the uh, outside will also get um, outside of the um, original image. We still get the blending. So what we can do is uh, do the color get RGBA like so disconnect these and then color make RGBA like so connect this here and we can grab another color get RGBA take the original texture and simply plug the alpha value over here and now we always get our correct alpha value um, anywhere we go really uh, for some reason it seems like the color is oh sorry I wasn't using there you go. Well, for some reason, this is becoming black. It's probably a bug in the software. Um, not sure where it's from because I've never seen it before. Um, yeah, this is very strange. It's the first time the note previewing isn't actually working as it's intended to. Oh, sorry, I was just simply using the wrong. Um, never mind. I was using the wrong, uh, the wrong thing. I was supposed to use this one here, not this one here, because obviously, if I have no alpha, I have no color either. Uh, I was supposed to use this, this preview slider over here. So yeah, no bugs. Just me not using the right slider at the moment. So yeah, as you can see, we have some nice um, additions with the colors. So if I just quickly grab the fragment color over here, we can start a new area to, in order to preview stuff like um, what we can do with the new sine, cosine, and tan um, nodes. So what I found a, a nice thing you could do is if you get the texture coordinates over here, let's also add our base texture as do the simple connection like so. What I can do is add a node inside Vec2 uh, we can do vector gets x, y, and length, like so, and then add another um, vector called uh, vector create. So if we were just to plug these like so, nothing would happen. However, I can add a node, vector 2d, uh, no, sorry, not vector 2, maths tan, I think it was tan that did the cool effect. And uh, let's just move these over here so we can see what we're doing. If you connect a tan like so, add node, color, not color, actually value tan, like so, what we get is this kind of a, I'm not quite sure what this is, like an oblong or something, shape. And um, you can go on and create some really, really interesting effects. Um, I, what I like doing was, um, for example, getting a value input. 
uh, two actually we're going to need. One for uh, a control, one for having the value of one. And um, if I add two, of, if I add the original vector with uh, a scaled vector, with the new vector, and I scale them so that they always retain the right size. So um, I add one scale here. I go here, add another scale, uh, and use this value here. And I can use the original texture coordinate like so, and then add them together. Mm, no value add isn't going to work. I have to use vec2 add. like so, and plug this into the co texture coordinates. Nothing's changed right now, but if I grab, uh, let's see, if I put this here and I grab my controlling thing over here, I can slowly like morph between the two. If I do this slowly, maybe you can see it clearly on your screens at home. So uh, as you can see, the new version allows for a lot more flexibility. Um, and still the coding ex the code export still works perfectly even with this much more complicated setup um, and if you paste it into your your project you'll get the exact same effect um, so yeah this is it for version 0.05 there's a, a lot of uh, new interesting features that has been added uh, of course there's been a lot of work gone into this uh, new UI which allows for well quite a lot more possibilities because um, well, to add all the different nodes, there's, there's going to be a lot more space. I still have two more sections. I'm thinking of adding a vector 3D section, um, and as well as uh, some uh, miscellaneous functions uh, like DDX, etc., which are more useful when doing things like um, normal mapping, etc. Uh, so, thanks you for watching, guys. It's been uh, well. It's been really fun developing this tool. I hope you guys find it useful and that you will use it for your projects. I've been Felix from GMWolf. I'll see you guys later.